homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. I am doing a fun social media campaign where I have a Facebook group and also an Instagram account that is all about this cookbook. This cookbook is 1925-1926 uh, Bozeman Women's Club, Bozeman, Montana. And it's basically kind of like a church cookbook. Uh, and it belonged to my great grandmother, Bertha, and my grandmother, Norma. And this came out of my grandma, Norma's house when she passed away and one of my family members sent it to me. And so what I'm doing is I'm posting a page a day and also just looking up if it's something interesting, I'm looking up some of the history on um, some of the ingredients that they're using and just posting some kind of fun little things. So on page 23, there is a recipe for cornbread or corn muffins. And it says, and remember, this is 1925. It says, this recipe was received many years ago from a Negro cook on the Ohio River steamboat. Uh, and then it gives the recipe. And it's essentially a hot water cornbread, so it doesn't have any flour in it. It's just cornbread. And you add hot water to that and it gelatinizes the cornmeal so that it actually is able to hold together and form a bread. Um, we happen to have a large pot of chili in our fridge right now because we were having some friends over and I needed to just do a quick and easy dinner. And so I did what I affectionately call dump chili, which is you brown off a pound or a pound and a half of ground beef. And then it's a couple of jars of canned beans, a um, jar of canned corn, a jar of chili base, um, a jar of tomato sauce, and then browning off some frozen or fresh onions and bell peppers. I always have bell peppers frozen this time of year. And you just saute all that off, meat, the peppers and the onions, and then you just dump everything else in there along with about three tablespoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, and a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, and just let that simmer for about a half an hour, and ta-da, you have chili. It's awesome. Um, really good chili, really quick. But what goes great with chili is cornbread. And so I saw this recipe today as I was posting a bunch of stuff and I think I'm going to make it and see how it turns out. So come join me as I make this pre-1925 Ohio River steamboat recipe for cornbread. All right, you guys, the instructions on this are not super clear because back in the day, women just knew how to cook for the most part but I make a similar recipe to this pretty regularly. And so I'm gonna roughly base this recipe on that in terms of how much liquid and on temperature to bake it at. So I need a cup and a half of cornmeal. And this is actually corn from my own flour corn. I have kind of gone down the rabbit hole on the different kinds of heirloom corns. And this one is a white flower corn that was originally a Hopi variety. And I think it's probably not a, a pure germo, germnoplasm. And so it's been crossed a little bit. And so it's, it's kind of almost a combination of flour and flint corn. They're two different things. I have a blog post on corn meals that I'll put a link to. Um, but anyway, this is my own homegrown, home ground flour corn. So I need a cup and a half of cornmeal, one teaspoon salt, and this is just sea salt, and then one teaspoon of shortening, and then it says preferably bacon grease. I'm gonna use lard. I don't happen to have any bacon grease on hand, so I'm gonna use lard instead. And it's interesting, that it's only a teaspoon because these recipes nowadays you typically put the grease into the skillet the bottom of the skillet and you cook it you pour the batter into here and it kind of crisps up in the bottom of the skillet so it's this is an interesting take on this where it's actually put into the cornmeal and then the hot water is part of what melts this and turns it into a paste the recipe that i normally make that's like this calls for a cup of flour instead of a cup and a half of flour. And then the amount of water that goes into it to make the mash is a third of a cup. And so I've got a cup and a half of flour here, so it's a bigger recipe. I'm gonna wanna be at least a third of a cup to start. This says pour boiling water into here 
um, to scald until it forms a stiff dough. This is boiling, it was just, just on. I'm a little hesitant to use all of this because it says a stiff dough. I wanna make sure that that lard melts because that was actually right out of the fridge. I don't want a chunk of lard in there. I probably should have melted that in the microwave. Ironic that I'm talking about using a microwave on a 1925 recipe, but we just wanna make sure everything melts. put all of that in there and see where we end up. And we're looking for a stiff dough. I don't think we're there yet. We probably need a little bit more. I'm gonna try another half of a third of a cup, which is not terribly easy to put into a recipe. Just a little bit more. I think the word ball was used when referring to this dough. So I'm just gonna keep putting water in there until it comes together. We're getting close. I'm making a 1925 cornbread recipe that is supposed to be an old recipe in 1925 passed down from a Ohio River boat captain. That's, that's good. Right? How do you not? And I thought it'd go good with the chili tonight, so. Okay, so we have a relatively stiff ball of dough and that was pr pretty close to two thirds of a cup. I would say start with a half a cup and then add a little more if you need to. And it says into this, Add enough milk or water. I'm gonna use milk to form a stiff batter. So think thick pancake batter probably. The order of operations here is quite interesting. This is definitely not what you would typically do for making cornbread. And again, it does help a little bit that I've made a similar recipe, so I kind of have a visual of what I'm looking for here. I'm gonna add just like a tablespoon, if that more, probably there. Yeah, that looks good. All right, stiff batter. And then I'm adding an egg and some baking powder. This is gonna loosen it up quite a bit. I probably could have left that last little dribble of milk out of there. Because that's gonna add another quarter cup of liquid basically. All right, before I add that baking powder, because it's gonna react as soon as I add it, I am gonna grease my skillet. So this is ghee, so basically clarified butter. I'm gonna add another teaspoon plus to this pan and I'm just gonna put this in the oven and preheat it for just long enough to get it melted so that I can get that pan nice and greased. To this we're gonna add three teaspoons is one tablespoon. The recipe says three teaspoons. It's the equivalent. Make sure your baking powder is fresh. It does expire. And I prefer baking powders that do not contain aluminum. I can taste the aluminum in the aluminum containing baking powders. And so, I mean, for just basic health reasons, I don't want aluminum in my baking powder, but also I can taste it. I think it ruins a dish. So I really look for non-aluminum. All right, that looks good. There we go. And I'm gonna come all the way up the sides here. 
with this grease because I don't want it to stick. And this might stick a little bit on the bottom. I've made cornbread in this pan many, many times. And usually it comes out pretty good, but you never know. My oven is preheated to 425. It does say cook in a very hot oven. Doesn't say the temperature because back in 1925, a lot of that was guesswork. We were actually just having a conversation on the social media group about whether or not the old wood stoves all had temperature gauges or not. Because there's very, like just temperature is just not used in this book at all. You know, it tells you how to judge it based on how hot it is next to your hand, um, or it, you know, indicates a medium oven or a hot oven, but it doesn't usually give actual temperatures. All right, we're gonna put this in our hot oven. It looks good. Zero information on how long it should be in there, just bake in a very hot oven sufficient for four people. So, looking at my Cook's Illustrated Southern Cornbread recipe, this one bakes 450. I should probably up that temperature just a little bit. Uh, this bakes 20 minutes, so let's start there. 450, 20 minutes, and this is a little bit bigger, so it's possible it'll need more time than that, but that's a good place to start. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, very nicely pulled away from the sides. Yeah, I think that might be done. I'm just gonna poke at this a little bit. The top is so done that I can't imagine. Yeah, that's done for sure. I'm a little worried this is gonna be dry just because there's so little fat in it. All right, I'm gonna give this about five minutes to cool in that pan, and then I'm gonna try to get it out of there. All right, it's been about five minutes. I think I'm gonna try Cutting this into wedges and pulling it out of there like it's a piece of pie. I was I was fussing with it earlier and crumbled it up a little bit. That's completely my fault. All right, let's see if we can get underneath this first piece. That's always the tricky part. Yeah, mostly. And there was no indication in the recipe of size of pan or shape of pan, so I just kind of winged it because I make when I make this my other recipe, I always make it in this skillet. So, but you, I'm sure you could do this in a. You know, just a eight by eight square pan would probably work just fine. If you didn't have a cast iron, you can see how crumbly this is. And that's mostly the lack of fat. I might have actually overcooked it a little bit too, which is crazy to think about, but that's certainly possible. All right, we're definitely gonna put some butter on this. Let me just taste this. Hmm. Interesting. A little on the salty side. Not sure a teaspoon of salt was the right amount. I think my original recipe calls for a half a teaspoon. That said, I think crumbled into chili, it's gonna be 100% fine. This is our beautiful chili. Oh, I wish I realized I didn't have a lot of butter at room temperature. So just for comparison, my America's Test Kitchen Southern Style Cornbread recipe calls for, and this is, again, it's a cup of cornmeal, not a cup and a half, so slightly less volume. Um, calls for a half a teaspoon of table salt, not a teaspoon, a little bit of sugar, uh, and then less baking powder. This called for a whole tablespoon of baking powder. This one, this recipe is only a teaspoon, and then a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. However, it did call for buttermilk, and that would increase the acidity, which is maybe why that baking soda is in there because acids will react differently with leaveners than non-acids. But a fun 
really old experiment. I was looking up Ohio River boats and first steamboat was on the Ohio River in 1811. And of course, completely changed commerce when they were able to have river boats going up and down that river carrying grains and farm products. So um, 1811, long time that that river has had river boats on it. And I think you can still take historic steamboat river trips on the Ohio even now, which is cool. All right, you guys, so there you have it. A very, very old recipe for hot water cornbread. And if I were to do this again, I would back off on the salt a little bit and I think I would cook it for a few minutes less. I actually think I might have overcooked it just a little bit. 20 minutes, surprise me, but 20 minutes in a very hot oven, 450. So um, yeah, definitely a fun experiment. Thanks for joining me. I'll put a post of the links to both the Instagram and the Facebook group for the posting of the pages from this old cookbook. If you want to join, it's really a fun project. I'm really having a great time with it. And it's really fun to honor those two wonderful women, my grandma and my great grandma who definitely raised kids and went through a huge amount of hardship and in short were really badass women so thanks for joining me we'll see you next time and while we're at it let's thank florence g white for the recipe thanks for watching tribe if you like this kind of content give me a thumbs up subscribe leave me a comment or share i have new content coming out every week